By the time you are watching this video, China has enforced the contentious National Security Act in Hong Kong, effectively ending its freedom and democracy. It has incarcerated millions of Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities in the concentration camps of Xinjiang. It was involved in the most brutal border clash with India in decades. It repeatedly breached the airspace of Taiwan and openly threatened them with war. China escalated the tensions in South China Sea to a new level. China's diplomatic relationships with UK and Australia has deteriorated to a new low. Its diplomatic relation with US has reached a point of no return. China's sinister geopolitical ambitions were not exactly a secret. It's been a decade since they were involved in reclaiming and constructing artificial islands in South China Sea violating international laws. Incursions and salami slicing Indian territory is by now a routine exercise. They claim Spartley Islands, Paracel Islands, Scarborough Shoal, Senkoku Islands and vast swaths of Indian and Bhutanese territory. They have never accepted Taiwan as an independent country. Their flagship infrastructure project Belt and Road Initiative is a cornerstone to China's debt trap diplomacy. They were aggressive, intimidating and coercive to begin with. And then the pandemic happened. A pandemic which has its origin in China. While the world struggled, China was the first one to recover from it. From the pandemic emerged a China which was more brazen in its attitude. Under the cover of the pandemic, China won up its game and stepped up the brinkmanship which is considered game-changing for the entire region. All this is supported by a hawkish form of diplomacy known as the Wolf Warrior Diplomacy. Of course, the world has responded, but the question is, are they too late? Hi, you are watching Sapientia Island. The National Security Act implemented in Hong Kong by China in violation of its agreement with UK is an all-out assault on freedom, invoking sharp condemnation from countries around the globe. It effectively cast aside Hong Kong's judicial autonomy by giving jurisdiction over political crimes that take place in Hong Kong to mainland Chinese authorities. The law also grants the Chinese government authority to prosecute non-residents who criticize Beijing even when they are in another country, opening the door to foreign nationals being arbitrarily detained in Hong Kong. Despite all the other issues demanding China's attention this year, the South China Sea has been revived as an arena for serious tensions. The highly disputed body of water lies on the southern coast of mainland China and between Taiwan and other Southeast Asian nations. China claims by far the largest portion of territory, an area defined by the Nine Dash Line. Beijing views the South China Sea as a crucial part of its maritime territory, not only serving as a bastion for its seaborne nuclear deterrent, but also as a gateway for the Maritime Silk Road, part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. During the six years since China began reclamation of several reefs and atolls in South China Sea, surveillance has revealed one of the world's greatest feats in maritime engineering and military construction, a series of structures called the Great Wall of Sand. An international tribunal in 2016 ruled that China's claim in the sea, which overlap with those of other ASEAN nations, have no legal basis. China outrightly discarded the judgment and proceeded with its military buildup. Post the pandemic, China has moved into second phase of a well-calculated plan to make this great strategic waterway of Southeast Asia an irreversibly Chinese one. In recent weeks, the Chinese Coast Guard rammed and sank a Vietnamese fishing vessel, swarmed and harassed a Malaysian oil rig, and threatened a Filipino Navy ship. The Chinese military forces are engaged in repeated aggressive actions, basing the median line of the Taiwan Strait and tracing the borders of the mountainous island with fighter aircrafts. China will attack Taiwan if there is no other way of stopping it from becoming independent. One of the country's topmost senior generals said it recently in a rhetorical escalation from China aimed at the democratic island China claims as its own. Although China has never renounced the use of force to bring Taiwan under its control, 
it's rare for a top serving military officer to so explicitly make a threat in a public setting taiwan is still officially known as the republic of china whose government retreated to the one time japanese colony after losing the chinese civil war to the communist party taiwan still happens to be china's most sensitive problem a border war in 1962 cast a long shadow on the relationship from which both countries have never completely recovered the line of actual control the demarcation that separates the indian and chinese controlled territories in the disputed area is not clearly marked and has never been fully recognized in addition to it china also claims the entire indian state of arunachal pradesh as its territory which it calls south tibet china since the last two decades is involved in a horde of activities that can be termed as anti indian in nature yet india has avoided criticizing china india does not want to offend china despite this at a time when india is struggling with containing the pandemic the galvan valley incident happens what exactly happened that led to the casualties of indian and chinese soldiers remain murky but more recent and detailed reports are indicating a planned chinese ambush of indian soldiers The Chinese authorities have detained more than a million people in recent times and placed in what they call as re-education centers. As per the Chinese authorities, the Uyghurs are being educated in vocational training centers in order to combat violent religious extremism. However, evidence shows many are being detained for simply expressing their faith. For example, praying or wearing a veil. or for having overseas connections to place like turkey the global anti china sentiment is at its peak in decades obviously without any doubt the sharpest reaction came from united states what started as a trade war has now spiraled into a wider geopolitical conflict that can be only described as the second coming of a new cold war the us and china has been involved in a tariff war since 2018 US officials have blamed China for the global spread of COVID-19. The US have also imposed sanctions on Chinese politicians responsible for human rights violations against Muslim minorities in Xinjiang. The US also revoked Hong Kong's special trading status. For the first time, US alongside Australia declared that China's vast maritime claims in the South China Sea were illegal and deployed two of its frontline aircraft carriers and their strike groups in south china sea against perceived chinese belligerents the american decision to close china's consulate in houston was an unprecedented escalation the us also announced new visa restrictions on chinese officials involved in the hong kong crisis us also issued an order canceling the visas of chinese students and researchers with ties to universities affiliated with the people's liberation army Huawei, the Chinese telecom giant, is being banned left and right across the globe. After US, UK, Australia and a de facto ban by France, Germany and India are now studying the possibility of shutting down Huawei from their respective countries. India has already banned more than 100 Chinese apps including the popular video networking app TikTok. TikTok is also facing its inevitable doom in the United States. As per the recent reports, Microsoft is in talks with ByteDance to acquire TikTok. Countries across the globe, including India and European Union, are changing their FDI and investment criteria to thwart off possible Chinese investments. Numerous countries have suspended their extradition treaties with Hong Kong, followed up by offering citizenship and work visas for Hong Kong citizens. UK has offered up to 3 million citizenships. Australia has called for a global investigation into the origins of COVID-19 in China. Of course, China has responded in predictable vitriol. It has launched a trade war against Australia and has promised to make an example out of the UK. It has also accused the US of deliberately trying to contain Chinese rise and trying to create a rift between the regional countries. In response to the Houston incident, China also shut down American consulate in Chengdu. But the quintessential question is where all this is going towards? 
Well, that depends on how much confrontation does China wants on its board. It's one thing to be assertive to fuel nationalistic sentiments at home. It's a totally different story to be engaged in a protracted low-level conflict with constant risk of escalation. Things can get more constrained for China if the Five Eyes Network of Nations, that is Australia, Canada, UK, US and New Zealand, decided to join hands with like-minded democracies that are Japan, South Korea and India, or even countries like Vietnam or Malaysia, to push back against China. Then there is the so-called Quad of Nations, a group that comprises Australia, India, Japan and United States beefing up their military alliance. There is also talk about a group called G D10, which includes Group 7 nations plus South Korea, Australia and India, a perceived anti-China group. China is involved in diplomatic skirmishes around the globe, but the key decision for them will be how hard they want to fight. I hope you really enjoyed this video. This was part 1 of the China Conundrum series. In the upcoming videos, we will be exploring every disputes in details. So please keep watching this space. Like, comment, share and please push that red button. Subscribe. Thank you.